Right. There was a person. I, this also could be Rabbi Shmuel. I'm not sure. And, and it was a person that was very close to the the Rebbe and the Rebbe. Anyway, so he was invited to go to a big um, um, uh, a gathering of rabbis. Big gathering of rabbis. And he asks asked the Rebbe if he should go or not, because some of these people were, were very not friendly to Chabad. And the Rebbe said he should certainly go. <clears throat> and that, But he wants to know what people say. He wants to know what happened there. So the person went to this big meeting of rabbis and he came back and the Rebbe said, how was it? And he said it was, it was very nice. It was then. I think he even spoke he said, but there was one rabbi that was very, very, very opposed to Chabad. Very nice man, nice man, but he was very opposed to Chabad. And so he asked why. He said, <clears throat> for two reasons. Reason number one is that why is it that the Lubavitcher Rebbe does everything on his own? Why doesn't he consult with other rabbis before he comes out with these ideas of, you know, putting tefillin on every Jew on the street and making big menorahs everywhere and going from house to house and checking on mezuzahs and <coughs> and putting up Chabad houses in these weird places where he sends, you know, young couples with the places where there's no kosher food or there anything that they have to bring. Anyway, he has all these ideas that he does the, the, the Rebbe, you know, everybody has to learn Rambam every day. And why doesn't he consult with the other rabbis? Why do he never consults with anybody? He just does everything on his own. <clears throat> why doesn't he talk to other rabbis? And that's number one question, right? I mean, of course, the Rebbe does talk to other rabbis, but he doesn't ask them if he should do. He just does things, you know, without consulting, just does it. Doesn't talk. Number one. Number two. Why is it the Chabad bases its whole thing? He talks about on this thing of Dir Batachtonim, making a dwelling place for God in this world. What's this idea of making a dwelling place for God in this world? I mean, it's it's it, true. It says in, in there's a midrash, midrash Tanchom or something. One little sentence is in the midrash, and that you base the whole Chabad on is this whole idea of making God revealed in this world. There's all these other things that did. To, to benefit people that we should go to the world to come. And why base Chabad on just that one little thing about making this world a dwelling for God? So that's my two questions. Why doesn't the Rebbe talk to of the other rabbis? And why this thing about basing the whole movement on making a dwelling place for God? So the Rebbe smiled. <laughs> and he said, one answers the other. He said, because none of these rabbis understand the importance of making this world into a dwelling place for God. So I have nobody to talk to. <laughs> I have no one to talk to. I can't. And there's all the things that the Rebbe does, all these strange things, is only for one person, one purpose, that the creator should be revealed in the creation. The whole world should be like a holy temple. In order to do that, you do all these other things, but no one else is motivated by that, making God a dwelling place, so they don't understand all the results, so there's no one to talk to. End of story. But in the end, everyone will see that in fact, the radio is right. And that's what's going to bring Mashiach now. Okay, so we'll meet tomorrow, God willing, at 8.15 in the morning. Have a good day with Mashiach now. Have a good month. See you all, God willing. I have a question. Tomorrow. I have a question. Question? Yes. It's, it's a little not related, but how long does it take you to send out the email? How, how, how long does it take to write out the email? It's so long. Okay, so the email goes like this. So it goes like this. Good question. It is definitely a related question. It's related to something, I, but maybe it's not related to what I just finished saying, but it certainly is related. <clears throat> so first of all, uh, I was given the idea to write these things about 20 something years ago. Well, I'll tell you one, what's it called? 1960. So it was like 20, 24 years ago. So it used to be that I would 
<clears throat> write them up. I would take like a week. And, you know, in the evening sometimes, and I, I would write it up and I would send it out. And in the beginning, this was, you know, 25 years ago, it was easy to get big lists of people because people, would, they didn't know you could send out, you know, when you sent out something, they wouldn't want it in a BCC or whatever it is. So you, anyway, you'd get all these lists. So I eventually, you know, there was like 5,000 people or something I used to send out every week. But a lot of people said, what are you sending to me? Who are you? I don't know. <laughs> eventually, and also there was the mechanical thing that it comes, dwindles down. But it was a big incentive. And someone someone told me, this was like 25 Rabbi, years. Your recording is on. Uh, okay, it doesn't make it. So he came up with an idea. This was like before I started the whole thing. Why don't you... And it was a good idea. And so I started doing it. So it ended up, answer your question. I wrote these things in the course of, let's say, it was from 19, 1990 something until until like for in the course of about twenty years, I wrote these things. So every week I would work little by little, and I would collect stories. And I would write them, and then I would hack around some sort of a question in the beginning and an answer in the end. How the it can. So now what I'm doing is I'm just sending out the old ones, but I'm working on them so that the question is a little clearer and it's a little more terse. It's not so wordy and the words of the, so I work on it. So it takes me to, to just correct it and to work on it. It takes me, let's say five hours, something like that. Five hours a week. Well, about that, you know, like a half an hour here, what? half an hour there and the three hours before I send it out and a couple hours, about four hours. That's, a, that's like writing the whole thing over again. Almost, but but the fact is, I could send it out as it is, and it, it's right. not that bad. But I want to improve it. So to answer your question, uh, all together to write these things out, I would say that each one must have taken me about ten hours to write. Wow! Something. How many like people are on the list? Now there's two thousand, two thousand, a little bit more than two thousand. I would like it if there was a lot more. Oh, and that's pretty good. Two thousand. Wow, that's, that's huge. Yeah. There should be. There, there should be. Yeah. How come we can't even get a few of these 2,000 people to join the Zoom? Well, I don't know how many of those 2,000 people actually read this thing every week, but I know that they don't erase it. They don't erase right. it every week. But listen, a lot of people are, you know, are looking at the Zoom. There's, you know, 50, 60, sometimes 100 people are watching the classes, regular classes in, in Torah or in the Kuti Torah. Okay, let's turn this off. But actually... Um, One second, let me just... You have the Zoom link.